all the important news that's taking place. Scott Brown, of course, ladies and gentlemen, has won a landslide victory in the state of Massachusetts, taking Ted Kennedy's seat. I want to go over his voting record, though, because obviously it is a message to Obama that we don't want the government hijacking of health care. We don't want all the Marxist Leninists that openly have every major czarship in his government running our lives. The problem is... If this is the type of Republicans that are going to be replacing the Democrats, we're in trouble. Okay? So it is a good message. It is overall a positive thing if we navigate this correctly. Or we'll end up in three years with a watered-down globalist Republican uh, that will just continue along the lines of George Bush and Barack Obama. But there is a major realignment taking place and not just a realignment here in the United States. In Europe, every time a country gets a chance to vote, they vote down joining the European Union. The problem is, is that they just keep bringing the vote back over and over again, like Ireland, till it passes. Now, we are joined for the balance of the hour uh, with the European Member of Parliament from Yorkshire and Humber for the United Kingdom Independence Party. We are joined by Godfrey Bloom, Godfrey Bloom, MEP.co.uk, to talk about a host of issues. But I wanted to get him back on last week when I saw some press releases he was putting out about the type of people uh, that are coming into the European Parliament now and the type of bureaucrats they're hiring are open Marxist-Leninist. Now, then when you point out that almost all of Obama's czars or almost all the bureaucrats in the EU write books an article saying they want total communism, then you say, I don't want communism. And they say, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, doesn't exist. I mean, you you cannot ignore that Obama's diversity czar praises Mao and praises uh, the Venezuelan leader, Hugo Chavez, who is starting to really become a dictator and restrict free speech. I mean, I liked it when he killed the North American uh, Central American, South American uh, you know, union they were setting up. Uh, but, I mean, he just gets worse and worse by the minute. Uh, so we're going to be breaking that down with him as well uh, as the fact that it's now coming out that the swine flu hype was a profit-making scam and it was a dangerous vaccine. I want to get his view uh, on that. Uh, Mr. Bloom, uh, great to have you on with us. A great pleasure again, Alex. Uh, morning to you and morning to Texas. I've thrown out a lot of issues there at the start, but, but, but let's get into your press release first with the type of individuals infesting uh, the European Union. Then the latest on Gordon Brown and, and Obama saying that they're going to try to just have the EU, England, and the U.S. start raising carbon taxes, even though Copenhagen failed to get a treaty. France says even though their Supreme Court found their carbon tax to be uh, unfair and discriminatory because the government can selectively enforce it. That's their plan. Shut down their competition. Give favors to friends. I want to talk about that as well, uh, how they're trying to regroup. They're now announcing they're going to try to list other gases as deadly. Uh, so, so they're not giving up even though they've been exposed. Yes, I've uh, been in the chamber this very afternoon talking about this very subject, actually. And it's interesting Fascinating, I have to say, just how similar the problems that we both have, you in America over there and, and, and we here in Europe, uh, the same lies, the same, same cheating, the same scams, all and, and about the same things. Uh, absolutely fascinating how close we are. We're running along on parallel lines here with lying and the cheating. Uh, may it help a little bit if I just explained uh, where we are at the moment. Every five years, we have a, uh, a new parliament, uh, which I mentioned briefly uh, when I was on your show last. Uh, every five years, the commission, uh, the commissioners change, <laughs> or commissars, as they're called by some countries here, and commissar is probably a, a better word. Uh, these individuals are selected by governments. There are 27 of them, because we have 27 countries in the European Union. Uh, and these chaps are put forward uh, with specific briefs, uh, whether it's climate, whether it's the economy, whether it's consumers, well, you know, whatever their brief happens to be, there are 27 on, of them, and every five years they're put forward, 
um, these characters, and we are allowed to interview them, and I'm allowed to ask them questions for one minute, and I'm allowed a supplementary question of one minute. So I, as an elected member for Yorkshire and North Lincolnshire, with over a quarter of a million votes on the committee, I'm only allowed two minutes to cross-examine these scoundrels, uh, and they call that democracy. Tell us about some of these individuals. I mean, they don't hide that they believe the European Union is the rebirth of basically the Soviet Union. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, and out of the 27, we have, uh, uh, I think, around about 15 unashamed communists uh, who, who, who don't try and pretend it. They don't try and cover it up. Uh, for an example, there's uh, the Spaniard, uh, Mr. Alumina, uh, who was he's a self-confessed Marxist. Uh, he's a member of the Spanish Socialist Workers' Party, and he was part of a joint communist administration in Spain in the year 2000, and they supported the Kremlin uh, when they were trying to stop the Baltic states getting their independence. So that's the sort of individual that we're dealing with. He's now in charge of competition commission. He's, he's the competition commissioner. Uh, he's now in charge of um, 27 countries' uh, competition uh, arrangements. So and, this and is this is rule by the bureaucracy, just like Obama and his czars. They don't care what the Congress says. They don't care what the uh, what the countries say. They just do whatever they want. Uh, well, they do because my Parliament, laughingly called a Parliament, is not a Parliament as you and I would understand it, Alex. Uh, it's an uh, amending chamber. So we get the law comes across to my Parliament from the Commission bureaucracy, um, and we get to change a few of the sentences and put a couple of full stops and commas in but the actual law is created by people like this and i say there's 27 of them uh they're all communists or marxists and totally unashamed those who aren't necessarily communists uh have a fairly crooked background as well um so we've got a right bunch of scoundrels who are going to be taking uh care of british legislation the oldest one of the oldest democracies on the face of the globe i don't know how my country got into this mess when you talk to these individuals, and we actually have some of those YouTube clips coming up later, but when you talk to these people, uh, I mean, they're not hiding this. No, um, it's quite extraordinary, uh, and the way they're allowed to get with us, I say, I have all the names here, all members of the Communist Party, or Marxists, or Socialist Workers, and those who aren't are scoundrels uh, with, with very fishy backgrounds back at uh, you know, their own home countries, where they've all been... Uh, either prosecuted or been involved in financial scandals of some description or another, uh, including Ireland, uh, so on and so forth. It was quite interesting. I might have mentioned this on the, um, your programme last time. For example, the commission that they brought in in the last administration, Monsieur Barreau, uh, absolutely fascinating, um, he was under a suspended prison sentence in France uh, for embezzlement, and he was the commissioner to investigate fraud in the European Union. You simply couldn't invent it. In fact, I I would be surprised if most of your listeners, or indeed the British listeners, who I know are uh, addicted to your programme as well, will actually believe this. They think I'm a swivel-eyed lunatic, but it's all here in front of me. So, uh, how does the Parliament ever actually get the rightful power of a democratic system, and how do you stop these, these commissars, or czars as we call them here, from just doing whatever they want? Well, um, it's, it, it's fairly interesting that, of course, you alluded to it earlier, quite rightly, that the French had their national referendum, the French rejected it, so did the Dutch. We were promised in Great Britain, we were promised a referendum by all the main political parties. Uh, they've all reneged on those promises, because they're all cheats and liars, uh, and so we haven't been given our say. And the reason we haven't been given our say, of course, is because everybody knows the British would vote no, just as the Dutch and the French did and the Irish did f first time round, uh, of course, being bullied into saying yes. Um, but uh, So what we've got to do, we've got to find a new party. We have to find a new party across, across the globe. There has to be, and I mentioned this perhaps last time, maybe we need to be looking at something like um, the party, the... Uh, the constitutional party, I would suggest. We have a constitution. We have a very good constitution in, the, in Great Britain. It isn't a written constitution like yours in America. I would argue that your American constitution is one of the greatest documents uh, ever written by men who are significantly wiser than the men we have in charge now. 
We have the document. What we need to do is make sure that it gets back in force. And we need to write to the scoundrels who now gov govern us. And I was very, very interested to hear uh, that the Republican had won. I predicted Obama. Ob Obama's honeymoon period would probably last about a year. And it's been about a year before the American public realised they're dealing with a socialist scoundrel. And it's rumbled. And... Um, uh, 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 and I'm very, very happy to see it, although I'm quite sure you're right uh, that the chap that they put in, if you scrape the surface, you'll find another scoundrel and socialist. I mean, that's the problem. The people uh, don't want big government. They don't want tyranny. But it just continues. <coughs> and, and now Obama has the lowest approval rating of any president one year into his administration. It's right down at 40 percent and plunging. But, I mean, I guess the good news is the, the, the people are trying to reject it in Europe, in England, in the United States. And more and more, the bureaucracy is hanging on by its fingernails. And uh, more and more people are becoming aware that the European Union really is an illegitimate institution. 